So welcome everyone. My name is Sally Jones and I want to start by telling you the story of how our Roses to Missions project began. All over the world, people gathered to celebrate January 22nd, 2021, the day the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, the TPNW for short, entered into force because a major milestone had been passed. On October 24th, the last year, the 50th country, Honduras, ratified the treaty. The treaty terms call for it to take effect 90 days after the 50th country deposits its ratification with the UN. 90 days after October 24th was January 22nd, 2021. On December 17th last year, I attended the second nuclear weapons ban entry into force planning meeting with people from all over the country talking about how they were going to mark January 22nd. I had missed the first meeting. That's when I think I heard someone was going to deliver roses as thank you gifts to the countries that ratified the treaty. Well, I thought we had to do that, didn't we? New York? New York City is the home of all the missions to the United Nations headquarters. I asked Seth Sheldon of ICANN, and it seemed like thank you deliveries were not being planned, at least not yet. I knew it was more than I could handle, and I thought of Mari Inoue of the Manhattan Project for a Nuclear Free World. I had visited the Japanese consulate with Mari last August. Maybe Mari would be up for visiting 51 missions with me. 51 countries had now ratified. At this point, I had no idea how we would do this, but I called her up and she said, okay, let's do it. We pulled together a list of all of our no nuke friends and got together a Zoom call to figure out how to thank 51 missions in New York City in the time of COVID. We only had one month to figure this out. I'll let Mari take it from here. Thank you, Sally. Um, let me put up the presentation. So I received a call from Sally that was about a week before Christmas. And first thing that we decided to do is to organize the first strategy meeting. Um, about seven people showed up. And after the meeting, we decided to make a to-do list. One of them was to put the uh, action plan on the ICANN event page. Also, we made a list of missions with contact info, Sally and Seth of ICANN. Uh, helped us uh, make the list. And we also reach out to representatives of other peace groups, friends, colleagues, and designer uh, who will be interested in joining us. In week two, uh, we drafted a health protocol to make sure that everyone will be safe. Uh, we just wanted to make sure that uh, we are not going to share, you know, we're not going to become sick. Um, and also we made a list of scheduled volunteers using this doodle poll, which is an online tool. And we came up with a plan for each team. Um, we also made a list of bathroom near the UN because in New York City, uh, indoor dining is prohibited right now because of the pandemic. So we just wanted to make sure that volunteers will have uh, the information that they need because each shift will be four to five hours. In week three, uh, we, uh, a couple of volunteers started making contacts to the mission by making phone calls, um, writing emails to set up appointments. Uh, we also completed a press release and uh, shared to our media contacts. We also shared it 
to um, endorsing groups so that they could share through the media contacts. Um, I, I'll talk about the media responses later, but uh, um, yeah, we didn't get much uh, interest from the US media, unfortunately. And we also make this uh, sign up sheet so that we will know that our team members will have all the information to communicate with each other. In week four, uh, we continue reaching out to the missions. Uh, each team created a detailed schedule for each day, and we finally finalized the graphics and wording on the certificate. And these are the design that Tony Sahara designed and the wordings, or um, I believe that Nidia came up with this wonderful word, life affirming instrument, which I really like. In the week five, uh, we were divided into eight teams to deliver roses and also we centralized team photos online so that everyone can post online and share the uh, photos or download the photos. And in terms of media response, we didn't get much uh, response from the uh, US media, but uh, uh, Joanne Robinson of Westchester, she was able to reach out to the Westchester County Press which is the oldest and only black weekly printed paper in Westchester. And they printed out the whole press release of Roses to Mission team. Um, other than that, uh, we were able to um, get only the article on the Japanese local media, which is um, shared through the um, Japanese businesses here in the US and also a selected location in Japan. So the article on the left, this is the article online and also in, on print um, by New York Seikatsu, a new New York, a Shuka New York Seikatsu. And those two on the right, these are the article from the March and Rally, which was held in front of the uh, United Nations on January 22nd. And these two are national um, Japanese media and no US media showed up. And this completes my presentation. And if you have any questions, please write in the chat. We'll answer them during the Q&A session. And um, this is the overview of the program. Uh, we're going to introduce Tony who designed the no nukes design with the yellow roses. Uh, we'll also uh, introduce uh, Seth of ICANN. And we'd like to hear some comments from the uh, missions. So if you're a representative of the missions and if you'd like to make any comments, like two to three minutes, uh, please reach out to us so that we can give you some time. Um, and also we'll have music by Shaolin and we'll hear from Kathleen and also um, Sally will talk about what's next and where we go from here. So next, I'd like to introduce Tony Sahara to you. He's a core member of Mahan Project for Nuclear Free World. And he has been um, designing amazing flyers for us for years. And he's the one who designed the certificate, thank you certificate and and also the panel that you see right behind me. So um, I'm going to stop sharing. So uh, can we move the spotlight to Tony? So Tony-san, can you tell us how you come up with this design and who you are and anything that you like to say to the audience. Okay, hi, uh, I'm Tony Sahara. Um, I designed the Yellow Roses illustration and uh, well, I uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, <clears throat> design and create the artwork. And uh, I also got to meet uh, some volunteers uh, to visit the ambassadors and uh, it's quite interesting. I got to go to Benin, Honduras, uh, and uh, Austria was uh, quite something. 
uh, they are so nice. They, they actually have a box of cookies for us. And, uh, you know, it's not from Whole Foods. It's uh, the ambassador said it's homemade, which makes it extra nice, I think. Actually, uh, I was taping the moment we got the box of cookies. So I'm going to post a link in the chat box so you can watch how it went. Uh, anyway, we all have the right to know who got to eat the cookies and uh, how they were. So <laughs> yeah, this Zoom meeting, is, that's what it's meeting all about. And uh, anyway, thank you. And uh, back to Sally and Mary. Thank you so much, Tony. Um, by the way, Tony is from Fukushima Prefecture in Japan. Um, so next, we'd like to introduce Seth Sheldon. Uh, he's the UN representative of ICANN. Uh, Seth? Hi, thank you so much for joining us and thank you so much for helping our team. It was without you, I don't think we were able to do this. So thank you. Well, it was, it's a real privilege, really. I mean, thanks first to you and, and Sally in particular for all of this coordination, which is a lot of coordination. Uh, and, and thank you, Tony, for the gorgeous designs. And Kathleen uh, Sullivan, who provided the beautiful roses that sort of gave effect to the title of the program, <laughs> the, the, the roses after all, that we all delivered. So, you know, I thank all of you for doing this great work of thanking everyone. Um, and it, it really was a great um, project, I think, and I uh, hope it continues as more states join the treaty. I mean, there's, there's a lot of work ahead, of course, for those who are working on the treaty, but, but January 22nd was this rare opportunity to stop and celebrate a, a, a tremendous occasion, a unique occasion. There's only, there's only going to be one global ban treaty for no, nuclear weapons, and it's this, and it enters into force just once. It was a great day. Um, and you know, this, this project, the Roses to Missions project, was especially a moment to uh, do what we really should be doing on that day, which is to give thanks to those specific states, those specific countries that led the road to entry into force. More are coming, but these are the ones that came first. These are the ones that really made it happen. Um, and you know, we get a lot of credit as civil society, and rightly so, for our work in advocating for the treaty. But it's, of course, the states, the governments, and often in particular, their diplomats, the people who you met with, uh, who were the ones that adopted the text, who secured support from within their own governments, who, who made the case in, in intergovernmental relations for the treaty and continue to do so, who press the buttons, who actually sign and who actually ratify, uh, who make this treaty a uh, reality, those, those first 50 states that brought about uh, its entry into force. And so in a pandemic, when civil society isn't able to converge on New York, how wonderful and how appropriate to have some New York City-based uh, organizations that could lead this effort and, and do this work. So, so thank you. Um, so yeah, Mari and Sally wanted me to give an update on the treaty and on ICANN. There, there is no more important update since entry into force than entry into force. That, that really is um, you know, the, the big milestone. Uh, we, we did have one additional ratification on that day. So bringing the total number of member states as of now to, to 52. Um, or at least the ratifications to 52. So uh, we know more countries are coming soon. The Philippines has just completed its process and is going to deposit soon. We have an additional uh, 36 countries that have signed the treaty already and just haven't ratified yet. So they're coming soon. And, and there's a total of at least 135 countries that support this treaty. That's more than two thirds of the world. And you know, one of the most important aspects of our upcoming work as ICANN is, is to continue to universalize the treaty, get signatory countries to ratify, get supporter states to sign and to accede and, and ratify, and to get non-supporters as of now to, to change and to support it. This will happen. Uh, the, the, the strong support we see now will just grow. And so we'll soon have more countries to thank and more flowers to deliver, I think. Uh, we, we have a lot of milestones up ahead. Uh, I could talk about a lot of them. I mean, as far as, you know, the TPNW, the, the most 
immediate milestones are, are technical, really. I mean, at the end of next week, for example, the TPNW has its first concrete deadline. Uh, submissions have to be made under Article 2 regarding uh, the, the status of nuclear weapons in each member state. This isn't going to be scrutinized with the same kind of fanfare of January 22nd, but it's, you know, it's, a, it's still a big deal too. It's the first action that in the diplomats that are on this call know that this is the first thing they need to do. The, the biggest thing that's going to happen under the treaty, uh, in, in, at least in the coming months, will be the, the first meeting of states parties. That's, um, that's not yet uh, been finalized as far as the details, but it's going to happen by or before January of next year in Vienna. And by that time, I hope that we're going to see and that we'll have a number of additional countries on board, uh, that they can be there. And um, it will be interesting to see what this community can do with that and, and to continue this, this program, perhaps, and to thank them. Uh, and I'm happy to be a part of that. I think this is a really lovely, um, a lovely program and effort. So that's my update. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Seth. Um, next, we'd like to introduce representatives of missions. Um, can we move the spotlight to Ambassador Prasad of Fiji? Thank you so much, Ambassador, for joining us. Thank you. Yes, sir. thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. So thank you very much uh, for, for one having this uh, evening and uh, uh, also for uh, sending uh, roses on a very very special day. I'm uh, very sorry I was unable to receive uh, uh, all of you or the COPs that come uh, at the Fiji mission because I was uh, in a meeting at the General Assembly and uh, met you on the on, on the uh, FDR. Uh, on the outside the UN rather than in the in the mission. Otherwise, I would have uh, offered the Fijian hospitality. But uh, uh, and uh, I could see you were rushing from one place to another, which was uh, especially uh, very pleasing on a cold day uh, uh, like that. Uh, but it's a wonderful uh, uh, treat uh, on, a, on a great day, on a historic day, uh, marking many, many years of your work uh, uh, here in New York and uh, across the world in mobilizing public opinion and uh, ensuring that there's pressure on governments to uh, do the right thing and ensuring that uh, countries like my own were supported whenever complex uh, negotiations were taking place. We look to many of you and your networks for advice and guidance uh, for Fiji State uh, many, many years to uh, to develop. So thank you all for the, for uh, staying across uh, with the journey. Uh, uh, the difficult part has been, uh, this, it's not that the difficult part has been done, but uh, let's say a, a complex part uh, has been done in the treaty is in effect. We, uh, we look forward to many other member states now very rapidly joining uh, and, and getting over the line, and we look forward to uh, uh, its uh, uh, effective uh, implementation. So thank you all very much, and I really appreciate it. Uh, a very kind gesture, and I wish you all very well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Um, are there any other representatives who would like to talk? Um, So um, okay. So um, Sally, I guess we can move on to the music section. Yes, I think I saw someone from the Mexi Mexican mission, but they might not have wanted to speak. But welcome to you. Um, so I want to introduce to you Charlene Leahy. Um, she's going to be presenting um, a song for us called If I Can, Can. 
Uh, she is a songwriter, singer, guitarist, and peace activist known for stirring lyrics delivered with sensitivity and passion. Charlene's very first song, Fires of August, about the danger of nuclear war, was written in 1979. In 1993, with the help of Pete Seeger, she oh. founded Songs for Peace magazine, publishing over 100 songs on peace, human rights, and ecology. Charlene has released three recordings of original songs, including For the 99, Deconstructing Racism, Inequality, Militarism, and Mad Rulers, with Feminist Passion, Optimism, and love. We'd like to share with you Charlene's latest recording, If I Can, Can. Just give me a moment. Our 
I want to say thank you so much to to Sally's Sally Campbell, who's here tonight, who actually heard me perform the song last weekend uh, for People's Music Network and called Sally Jones and Sally Campbell. Sally Jones, thank you so much for allowing me to share my music with you tonight. It's a great honor. Thank you, Charlene. And uh, we can put in the chat the website so people will know how to get in touch with you. So back to Mari. Oh, thank you so much. Um, let me see. Oh, so um, next we'd like to introduce Kathleen. Kathleen designed the roses. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's such an honor to be here. I really love um, hearing Charlene's music just now because it reminds me of, I had the privilege of working with one of the um, early ICANN visionaries, a woman by the name of Felicity Ruby in the 2000 um, when she created Reaching Critical Will, which is part of the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. And she and Dimity Hawkins, um, when, when we spoke early about I can, uh, the refrain was, I can, you can, we can. <laughs> so <laughs> that's really lovely to hear. Um, I have been dedicating my life to nuclear disarmament for the last 30 some years. And during this time, I've had the privilege and honor to work with so many beautiful people, uh, including my dear friend, Robert Krumquist, who's on this call tonight. Robert and I have brought atomic bomb survivors into the lives of some 40,000 uh, young New York City high school students. And um, so it's been, you know, really like everybody um, trying to figure out how to make um, just make a difference during this lockdown time. So I really want to take my hat off to Sally and Mari and the whole team that brought the um, Roses to Missions into being. Um, I would say that if there were no nuclear weapons in the world, if there was no prison industrial complex, I would like to be a florist. <laughs> <laughs> So it was such a pleasure to uh, be the person that coordinated um, delivering the flowers to all of the different groups. Um, I was very uh, buoyed by Tony's design with the yellow flowers and we paired them with purple wax flowers. So that was, that was really, really lovely. And one of the things that Robert and I like to do when we, when we bring this uh, news, when, when we bring atomic bomb survivors to young people, it's really, of course, uh, a very difficult uh, story to hear. So we like to focus not only on the suffering and the reasons why we must rid the world of nuclear weapons, but also what it is that we love about being alive and connecting to this notion that because nuclear weapons exist, because there are thousands of nuclear weapons on hair trigger alert right now that are tethered to, to earth by human beings who make mistakes and the technology and, and instruments of technology that we have built that all will eventually break and fail. Um, so it really is something of a miracle that nuclear weapons have not been used by accident um, or by design since Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Of course, they've been used thousands of times um, throughout the world in the form of nuclear testing. And I'm very moved to hear the ambassador from Fiji um, being part of this, this program this evening. And part of what excites me so much about the treaty is the recognition of Hibaksha, the recognition of test survivors. But when we focus on what we love, for example, I love flowers, we are able to move our intention to the world that we want to create. And um, so it was my great honor to be a part of this group. And I'll just close by saying that there's a group of us here in New York who are working on legislation at city council 
um, very uh, powerful legislation that would re-identify New, uh, New York City as a nuclear weapon free zone, would divest our pension funds from nuclear weapon producers, and uh, would com um, organize a committee where we could advise uh, the mayor's office on how to uh, do things like what kind of curriculum we want New York City students to learn about nuclear weapons, the risk and how to get rid of them. Because it's Valentine's Day, we have started a project, um, very briefly explained to you, um, I Love, the I Love campaign. This is something that was inspired by a group of high school students in Nagasaki. In 2005, I hosted a group of um, Nagasaki high school students and they created these postcards that are in the kind of um, iconography of um, I Love New York, I Heart New York. Mm -hmm. And they uh, distributed these postcards, I Heart, and then there was a blank that you could fill in the blank. I love uh, summer, I love my mom, I love music. And these are all the reasons why we work for the abolition of nuclear weapons. So I'm, I'm hoping that we've, we've just been organizing this and I hope that all of you will join us in this I Love campaign. And we have created postcards to send to Council Speaker Corey Johnson because our legislation, which has a super um, majority, a veto-proof majority in city council, all we need is for the legislation to be brought to the floor for a vote. Um, so through our community in the Roses to Missions, um, through all of you who are joining here on the Zoom tonight, I hope that we can send a message to the council speaker to bring that um, to a vote so that New York City can be a part of for example, the I Can Cities campaign, um, that New York City can acknowledge the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons and do concrete things within our city council. Um, and also acknowledge the responsibility that New York City as a city and New York City's institutions have to the nuclear age, because um, I, I would wager that most of us on this call know that it wasn't called the Manhattan Project for nothing. The first fission experiments um, in the United States were conducted at Columbia University, incidentally on January 22nd, 1939. Um, who would have known that all those years later on January 22nd, the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons would enter into force, which only proves yet again that it is the dedication, um, the grit, the ingenuity of individuals and when we come together as a group and when we work across um, the bridge of activists and diplomats, uh, we can do so much. So with that, I'd just like to thank everybody and hand back to Mari and just say, we can't wait to deliver more roses to more missions as more countries uh, ratify the treaty. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kathleen. Oh, and also a happy birthday, belated birthday. <laughs> Her birthday was January 22nd. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's amazing. So um, we'd like to move on to the report from Teams. Um, they will be sharing photos. So let's start from Sally. OK. Um, before I start with my report, I want to share with you a photo. Um, this message appeared on the side of the UN Secretariat the Friday before our mission began, courtesy of Rise and Resist. And we have some people on the call who are responsible for this, so thank you. Missions that we visited commented on this illumination uh, they saw it from around the UN that night and we're pretty excited. So Brendan, Mari, Tony and I were part of the first two Roses to Missions teams that ventured out on Martin Luther King Day, Monday, January 18th. I showed up very early to Grand Central Station, our meeting place, not knowing how this was going to work. For our team, it had been difficult to reach some of our missions by phone or email, 
The staff was working from home in many cases. We had some appointments, but not for every stop. But there was Tony and the beautiful posters. There was Mari, then Brendan. Then Kathleen arrived with Blair and a bag full of yellow roses. So we headed off to the mission of Benin to meet Ambassador Ogu. His Excellency Ogu left an international meeting to sit with us and accept our offerings of gratitude. This treaty meant a lot to his country, the ambassador said. Tony took the photos and we, we left feeling like we couldn't have had a better start to our mission to the missions. For two of our deliveries to Antigua and Barbuda and Botswana, we had to leave our rose and gift envelope at the mission without speaking to a representative. The Belize mission told us to leave our package in the mail room, but the building was closed on MLK day. So we returned on Tuesday and an enthusiastic mail room staff person took us up to the Belize office for us to make the delivery. We were lucky with Bangladesh and Bolivia too. Both missions were open and counselors came out to receive our gifts and take photos. The Bolivian counselor had worked on the treaty. We had a date with Austrian ambassador Alexander Marchik and Daniel Rothman shown here. Uh, Daniel is a first secretary who worked on the treaty and his specialty is disarmament. They came down with two other representatives who took photos and the, the cookies are somewhere. Oh, I, I might not have them in this picture, but um, we all shared the, the um, cookies, Tony. I'm sorry you didn't get any. This treaty means so much to Austria. One of the countries that started putting the spotlight on the humanitarian consequences of nuclear weapons and got the ball rolling for the TPNW. Austria intends to host the first meeting of states parties to the treaty in Vienna within 12 months of the treaty's entry into force. That's last, and that's my report. Thank you, Sally. Uh, next, let's hear from Christian. Hi, everyone. I'm Christian Chapano. I'm just going to do a screen share. Okay. So yeah, so I'm reporting back. Um, similar to Sally, um, my group um, left um, met with the missions on January 18th. The group consisted of the fantastic team leader Kathleen Sullivan. Tabakasha stories, Mari Inono, um, Alan Franti of PSR, New York, my um, Blaze, um, Kathleen's um, partner, and myself. And we visited um, several missions, including Jamaica, Holy See, Honduras, Kazakhstan, the Lao P um, People's um, Democratic Republic, and home visited um, Kiribati. And we also visited, as you can see in the picture, the Suto. And unfortunately, like in, in many of the cases, we were we were unable to, um, because of the COVID-19, um, have um, in-person dialogue. But we had very strong meetings um, with several representatives that I wish to highlight. The first one is that we met with um, actually the the, um, the leads, the entire team from the mission of Kazakhstan, both the disarmament um, counselor and the permanent representative of Kazakhstan. And we had an in-depth conversation about the TPNW. Now, many of you um, may know about Article 1 of the TPNW, which prohibits and bans you know, nuclear weapons, activities related, production, and so forth. But it also contains a series of positive obligations, both on um, victims assistance, and environmental remediation. And this was a very you know, significant discussion that we had with Kazakhstan because Kazakhstan experienced the tragic humanitarian impact of nuclear weapons. 
for many, for, for decades, they experience the effects of Soviet testing in their land. So we had an in-depth discussion about the positive obligations, about victims assistance and how to collaborate as well as about, about um, New York City initiatives that were mentioned already. And I want to acknowledge that on this call, we have a diplomat from the mission of Kazakhstan kindly um, joining us. So that was the meeting we had um, very strong, it was about 30 to 45 minutes long. And then we had a um, really fantastic photo opportunity with the ambassador of Kazakhstan. And for many of us who attended, it was one of the more, um, well, I would say it was the most like meaningful like visit that happened that day. And then second, we had the opportunity to meet with the ambassador of um, Lao PDR and his first secretary um, came out as well, first secretary who covers disarmament affairs. And we had a um, brief discussion with them about the TPNW and the Roses to Mission initiative. And they were very, and this was again very special because um, Lao has been a very strong supporter of the positive obligations of the TPNW. And it actually hosted a um, meeting several years ago at its mission about the discussions on positive ops and also how to engage with Asian and Pacific states. And then third, I wish to highlight, which was separate, but um, you know, Robert can go into it. We had the opportunity to meet with the ambassador of Fiji outside of the UN. And he graciously took out time to meet with us and accept the gifts. So that's my presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Christian. Next team will be Sylvia. Um, Sally's going to help me with the photos on this because I'm not very techni technologically smart. Um, on Tuesday, uh, January 19th, we first met with, that's myself and Sally and Anthony Donovan and I believe Mary, you were there. I think maybe you took the photo. Um, we met with Leah and she is the receptionist at the mission. She met us outside and she accepted three roses because Cook Islands and Nui uh, do not have any missions in the United States. So she's going to, she accepted them and we're gonna send the gift packages to Cook Island and New when we get addresses, which we're working very hard on. Um, the next meeting we had was, the next picture is of Nicaragua. Oh, no, that's Mexico, okay. Mexico. Um, we met outside with the ambassador, um, Jacket. And Tony, the woman on the oh, right. Sorry, sorry. Um, Nicaragua was next. I, I mixed them up. <laughs> I, I think I, I hit it twice. So. All right. We're back in Nicaragua now. This was a great <laughs> ambassador, Jasser Jimenez. And he, it was a beautiful mission with wonderful photographs of Ortega and Ortega meeting with Castro. There were a lot of interesting things to, to look at. And we were very warmly received by them. They showed us, they had at the time, a uh, meeting going on online. They have a meeting once a week with a lot of Latin American nations where they exchange ideas and thoughts and what's going on with lots of important issues. So he talked about that. Uh, only problem, it's only in Spanish, so only, but he invited us to join and, and listen in on it. Um, and it was taking place right then and there on Tuesday. The other thing is Ambassador Jimenez apologized for his casual attire quite a bit. <laughs> it was a, he was dressed very casually and kept apologizing, but they were very warm to us and we really enjoyed meeting the ambassador and his aide. Um, the next visit we had that day was to Mexico. And Mexico, we have Ambassador Jaquette, Jack, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it right, and Tony on the right. I think on this meeting, on, on the meeting right now, Bra Braulio Fausto, um, okay, I'm not pronouncing it correctly, but Mr. Fausto, I think you're on the meeting. I don't know if you'd like to say anything, but I believe you were there outside helping us with the pictures and things like that. Um, and they had, they sent a tweet. I think you have a picture of it, Sally. I think you put it in here. They sent a tweet out. Yeah, um, just a second. 
There we go. They there it is. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So they tweeted out. They were ex the ambassador was extremely impressed with the illumination that was done by Rise and Resist. She talked about it quite excitedly. Um, she thought it was wonderful. Um, and the next meeting we went to was on th Thursday. We skipped Wednesday because of the inauguration. And we went to visit with Nauru, a very tiny country. We met with the ambassador Margot Dier and her aide. And we learned quite a bit of history about this tiny little island. Um, they were very, very, they warmly received us. That was, it was a really good visit as well. The next visit we had that day was with the Malta ambassador and ambassador Vanessa Frazier, you can see her in the center there in the black dress. She met with us in her home. She invited us to her apartment. She made tea for us. She had her daughter take pictures of us. <laughs> it was quite friendly. Um, but we learned so, I found out so much about Malta that I never knew. Um, it's quite wonderful, their history. They're dedicated very much to nuclear disarmament and so many other critical issues that the world is facing, uh, climate, militarism. And they, she told us stories like they were once um, the host to so many foreign military bases and it, it had a lot to do with their economy. It kept their economy going, um, all the service that was done for those um, for those military bases. And they took the bold move to remove all foreign military bases from their country in the early 70s. Um, and in 1981, Malta officially became a neutralized state. Um, I don't know about you, Sally and Eileen, who's there and Mari, but Malta's on my list for a visit. <laughs> it just, when, when things get better, it's, it sounds like a wonderful country to go visit. Um, the next place we went was Maldives mission. And we met with Ambassador Vilmisa Hussein and Councillor Hussein Shihab Hassan. The ambassador told us that she had been the day previous to um, the Biden inauguration in Washington. And she was so, she was very effusive about what a wonderful event it was and, and how the poet laureate and all the wonderful things that happened at that inauguration. She's very excited about it. We then moved on to Namibia, um, the mission at Namibia. And the gentleman in this picture is the first secretary of the mission, Felix Tukundir. I can't say it very well, Tukundir. Um, and he was unexpectedly called into a meeting just, uh, just a few minutes before we were arriving. And so Sally, who's there, and Eileen, Ranyi and I waited for about 30 minutes. Then Ranyi and I, went running ahead as we had an appointment with the mission, the Malaysian mission at 3 p.m. and it was very far away from Namibia. So we ran off and they were, uh, Mr. Tegunde, the Gunhendia apologized profusely for keeping Sally and Eileen waiting and they had a very good visit. The strange thing was that we got to Malaysia in time for the 3 p.m. meeting and we were warmly received by a woman, Alicia, uh, Amalisa, I'm sorry, Amalisa, who was the assistant to Ambassador Idid, and his aide was there too. We presented the ambassador with his rose, this is the picture there, and then proceeded to present the thank you certificate. Well, to our embarrassment, the ambassador said, thank you, but this certificate is addressed to Namibia. So, <laughs> oh my goodness, Sally and Eileen had the same situation at the Namibia mission where they were, and so somehow we had mixed up the packets, the thank you packets. So Sylvia and Eileen apologized to Felix and they ran up to the mission and made the handoff to Ambassador Adid. All ended well, but they were, ver they were very sweet. They were very wonderful to us and did not make us feel bad at all for our mistake. Um, then we had to go on Friday to the Nigeria mission because they were only open Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays and we were going on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So here we see, this is the woman on the left in the first picture is the social secretary, <clears throat> excuse me, at the mission. And she is, her name is uh, Fall Astu. She, her name is Miss F Astu Fall, no, Fa Miss Astu Fall, but she calls herself Fall. And then the woman in this next picture, there's a picture of Ranyi and the woman in the center is Marian Usaf Mohammed who is the attache to the ambassador. He wasn't able to be there, Bondi, the ambassador Bondi. 
Um, she told us a lot of interesting stories about N Nigeria and I was amazed to hear that it's a very vibrant film industry there and that um, she was saying they were number two in the country. I've looked it up and some people say it's number two, number three, but it's amazing how much film. They're bigger than Bollywood. They're called Nollywood. And the other thing they're very famous for is their fabrics. So that, that was a, those were our visits. I just wanna say thank you to Mari and Sally because th these few days left me very hopeful about this world because we met so many wonderful people and country at these missions of these 51 countries and also all the people involved in this project. It makes me feel much more hopeful about going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. Uh, next, we'd like to hear from Catherine. Kathleen Skovic. You have to unmute. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mari. Uh, a most cherished experience has been delivering thank yous to some of the 51 missions that had the bravery, courage, and wisdom to ratify the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. Some of the missions we visited, and this was on January 19th, Tuesday, were Paraguay, Samoa, Panama, and the Republic of San Marino. Our team members were Akiko Nishijima, Hideko Ataka, Nydia Leaf, Phyllis Cunningham, Brendan Fay, and myself. You may notice I'm wearing a garland of origami cranes. And this was presented to me by Habaksha. And he gave it to me while in Hiroshima in 1986. And it has been a constant reminder of the importance of us working to rid the world of nuclear weapons. And now the world is one step closer to never having such a catastrophic nightmare again. So we are standing on the shoulders, as it oft is said, of so many other people who have worked to rid the world of nuclear weapons. The year before I was in Hiroshima, I went with a group of people from St. Peter's Lutheran Church to Russia, the Peace Mir, Peace Crane trip to deliver origami peace cranes to Russia that no child should ever die of a nuclear weapon. So people worked before and that 1985, 1986, and now I've had the blessing of being part of this experience and I'm very grateful to everyone who's been a part of it. If I could show one or two photos, I'd be happy to do so. Um, this is our group starting out. Uh, on the left, we have Phyllis Cunningham, a friend of Nydia's, Brendan Fay, and uh, 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 Hideko, and Nydia, and uh, Akiko. Did I get those mixed up? I think I might have. Okay, so this, we met uh, early in the morning at Grand Central, and Kathleen brought us the bundles of um, yellow roses for our groups to deliver to our missions. And you notice, that Hideko, Akiko, and Nydia on the right of the photo have little, little bags. And Kathleen even made these little bundles of uh, smaller roses for each of us and uh, the purple wax flowers. So this is when we arrived early in the morning and Tony made one of these wonderful posters for each team. And you can't see it, but the part at the top that says no nukes and the roses he did on a separate piece of foam core so that's actually raised above the background so it has a three-dimensional element um and next let's go to oh i'm just this is not sequential i'm sorry i got this mixed up uh this this photo is uh actually from saint vincent and the grenadines and you see uh this is sally cunningham uh, holding the yellow roses in the background there. These are the two people that were just about ready to leave. And we were lucky we got there in time. 
Uh, let me see my next photo. Okay, uh, let me see here. Okay. Let me take, oh yes. Okay, so this is our group and we are standing in the elevator area. Um, of the Catherine, I think you have to stop sharing this and then share the new one. Because we haven't seen, we're we seeing the see same one. photo. Are you seeing Panama? No. Oh, you're not seeing Panama? So stop sharing this one and then um, and then share the next one. Um, okay, let me see. And uh, screen share. We've only seen one so far. Oh, you've only seen one. Oh my word. Okay. Uh, here's one of my favorites. I hope this comes up. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Uh, okay. This was, oh my word, why is not this coming up? Oh, can you see this one? Yep. Okay. This was uh, as we were entering Samoa and we opened the door and uh, we were greeted by this wonderful woman who uh, welcomed us and immediately um, Phyllis handed her the yellow rose. And you can see how grateful she is. And then she welcomed us in to the office and uh, we met other people as well. So let me see if I can get my screen share here for the next chair. Uh, okay, let's see. Up. Oh. Oop. Okay, I've got to be a little more nimble here um, on my screen share. Oh dear. Okay. Uh, sorry about this here. Um, let's see, screen share. Let me try that one more time. Um, Oh, sorry, I can't seem to get this uh, next photo up. Uh, but anyway, she. Uh... We could send them out later, Catherine. Yeah, OK. OK, I think we're going to have to do that because I cannot get my other other photo up here. OK, so um, let me try one more time. And let's see here. Okay, we'll have to send them out another time. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Okay. You're great. So, fun. next, we'd like to hear from Seth's team. Yeah. Hi. Hi again. Hi. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, so, okay. Uh, well, thank you for all these reports so far and the opportunity to report on our team, we had uh, seven missions and we had a very efficient uh, and successful uh, one day uh, uh, where we went to all of them and we met with some very appreciative and engaged diplomats. Um, we had myself on our team, plus uh, Dr. Ellen Ferranti uh, of Physicians for Social Responsibility New York and uh, Michelle Fuji from Friends Committee on National Legislation. Uh, we were also joined for part of our uh, part of our time by uh, Susan Strickler, a director and filmmaker, uh, and Michi Takeuchi, who is a second generation Hibakusha. Uh, and we were very fortunate to have, have them both uh, to convey thanks um, to these missions and to remind some of these diplomats about the stories behind the treaty and, and, and the, the, the suffering that we're trying to prevent. Uh, Susan and Mitchie, by the way, have made a documentary film about Setsuko Thurlow, who is one of the most important advocates for ICANN and for the TPNW, and specifically about Michi's relationship with Setsuko. And so they were able to film uh, a few segments on the thank you mission that uh, will be featured, I think, as a bit of a coda to the film. At least that's the plan. Um, okay, I think I can maybe try and share some photos too. I'm just trying to pull them up. Um, let's see if this works. Um, okay. Um, you see things. 
Uh, is that working? Uh, so, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Ah, thumbs up. Okay. So right. So we um, we started at the permanent mission in Vietnam, where we met outside the mission, as you see, with with uh, Mr. Nian Nguyen, uh, who's the head of Chancery, and we had our mutual exchange of greetings and thanks, and provided our handoff with him. This was actually a last second change, as we were scheduled to meet with the uh, the uh, the DPR, the Deputy Permanent Representative, and Charged Affairs. But there were a few last minute shufflings that had to happen, and so that didn't happen. Um, we walked from uh, there to Third Avenue to stop at the permanent mission of Tuvalu, our second uh, meeting, where we had a actually outside the meet mission building, we had a Zoom meeting with uh, Ambassador Samuelo uh, Lalonio, who's their permanent representative. And um, we did that meeting with all of us from the street. But afterwards, as we had arranged, we, uh, we had arranged this with their deputy permanent representative, Bakasor Teali, uh, to bring our thank you package upstairs. We left it outside their office, and uh, Michelle and I took a selfie. Uh, and they picked up their package later that day and thanked us. Uh, and from there, in the same building, Michelle and I went over one um, office over to uh, meet with Ambassador Ordel Barman, uh, their uh, deputy permanent representative for, um, I'm sorry, no, I'm, I, I skipped one. Uh, wait, oh no, yes, I'm sorry, but let me back up there. We went uh, one office over to the Republic of Vanuatu. We met with there with whose photo uh, in the picture with Ambassador Odo Tevi, uh, who's their permanent representative. Uh, and after some discussions, we came downstairs to do some photographs with the uh, larger group. Is that working? Feel like screen sharing's just stopped. Yeah, it just stopped. Let me try that again. We're all having technical difficulties, which, as Kathleen reminds us, is the reason why we don't want to have nuclear weapons, because we screw things up. Um, let me see one second if I can pull that up again. Yeah, I think I can. Hold on. Let's see. Um, in the delay, but here it is. Okay. Um, you see it again? Yes. Okay. So, and then, right, then we went and we had our meeting, uh, our, our, our group photo. Uh, now you can sort of see a more fuller representation of our group. Um, that's Michi on, on the left side of the screen and Michelle, uh, that's Ambassador Tevi and me holding ICANN's Nobel Peace Prize medal, which uh, in the prior photo uh, he, he was posing with as well. And uh, there's Ellen on, on, on the right side of the screen. Um, so uh, from uh, Vanuatu, uh, we proceeded to uh, visit uh, the mission of Trinidad and Tobago. No one was in the office. This is actually a screenshot of our Zoom meeting with Ambassador Ordell Barman, their deputy permanent representative, uh, which we did from the street. Uh, and after we had our meeting, and in the little inset there, there's Michelle and Michi, and I guess that's me. But <laughs> uh, and then, um, then from there, uh, Ellen and I went um, to uh, to to uh, drop off our package outside. That's the wrong one, though. Okay, that's where we dropped off our package to uh, Trinidad and Tobago, and. Um, from there, Ellen and I proceeded to uh, the mission of Uruguay, which is the photo here. And we had a very nice brief meeting that um, is not in the photo, but um, where we, we met with the counselor, Maria Noel Barata, um, and we handed off our gifts to her and then took this photo, alas, only outside of the mission. Um, and uh, from there, the group proceeded to uh, Thailand where we met with Ambassador Vitavas uh, Srivihok, their permanent representative, as well as Mr. Karan Kunjarana Ayutthaya, their first secretary. So actually Thailand is a very important, uh, I should note, uh, of our group, a particularly important country to, to highlight because they're one of the countries that led to, that led the process of the TPNWs, uh, negotiation, adoption, uh, and continues to be in what we call the core group of states to the TPNW. So this was a, a key one on our list to thank 
Um, and uh, they had, we had a very nice uh, substantive meeting with them and they even provided fresh refreshments and even then tweeted about it afterwards. So I have a couple of screenshots of the tweets um, that they, uh, that they, that they uh, then posted. And our final visit was to uh, Venezuela, the permanent mission of Venezuela, where we met with Asbina Sevilla and made our handoff and exchange of thanks to her. And that was it. Uh, that was our, uh, our seven. Thank you so much, Des. Next, let's hear from Brendan and Jim. Brendan and Jim Tano. Thank you. Thank you, Jun-san, for joining us. It, it is so nice. Uh, I will share the photos we took. Oh, I was in the team of Thursday afternoon. It was January 21st. It was cold, but a nice day. Group members were Nidia, Sally Campbell, Kathleen, Brendan, Ed, and me. Uh, Brendan will talk about our visit uh, to South Africa mission and, and Ireland mission he visited uh, another day. Okay. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Yes. Um, we. This is uh, a, a picture of our visit um, with the uh, South African ambas uh, ambassador. Um, His Excellency, His Excellency, um, J. M. Matt Gillia. Um, he really welcomed our group and. Uh, extended thanks for um, the work and the role of civil society in this global movement um, for the passage of this treaty at the United Nations. It was a very profound moment for us to extend thanks to South Africa, since they are the world's first nation to disarm nuclear weapons and to decommission nuclear weapons. It was a very profound acknowledgement and, and also we brought greetings from Father Michael Lapsley, um, who is a great hero of the anti-apartheid movement and I had been in touch with and who sent greetings from South Africa. And it was a wonderful, wonderful meeting. But again, what is not really known is this unique, the unique, um, you know, example of South Africa among these 52 nations who've ratified the treaty in being the world's first nation to disarm and decommission their nuclear weapons. And we had Ed Caraballo with us who took some lovely photographs. Thank you, June. You're welcome. And this one. So as June is pulling up actually the next photograph, this is um, uh, a photograph uh, outside the United Nations where we were met by Ambassador Geraldine Byrne Nason, um, the permanent representative um, from Ireland. And it was a, a particularly proud moment because Ireland has a very unique um, history in the United Nations and um, on the issue of disarmament and has been a leader um, actually since the late 50s and has stayed the course. Now, uh, as you can see here, here's Seth. Here's the ambassador who was so proud to be able to hold the Nobel Peace Prize. And here's myself, and of course, here's K. 
Kathleen who presented the rose. It was a very profound moment of, of course, Ireland has had two women presidents and we're very proud of Ambassador Geraldine Barnason, who was also from my hometown in Ireland, um, Drogheda. And in fact, uh, a friend of mine in Drogheda sent a message that day and he said, how profound that um, in the global movement for nuclear disarmament, that two people from the town of Drogheda would be engaged in this movement. One, an ambassador from Ballsgrove and the other, an activist from Scarlet Street. But it was really a lovely moment. And uh, we spoke a little bit about the history. What I was more moved about was, as we were thanking her, she said, it is you from civil society, the activists from around the world that really pushed and moved and motivated government leaders from around the world. She said, it is you that ought to be thanked for this historic moment. And of course, we all talked about the, the ongoing work that we continue to do with each other. It was really lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Brendan. Um, the last team is Robert's team. Oh. Robert, oh, uh, Jun-san. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Do you still have sorry. another photo? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah so, that's Jusan. okay. Yes, uh, this is... Uh, it's gone. This is the photo of the permanent mission of St. Kitts and Navis to the United Nations. The embassy staffs were almost leaving, but stayed there to welcome us and took their time for taking some photos with us. Then we went to permanent mission of St. Vincent and the Grenadines to the United Nations, but that was already closed. So we went up and left our present at the door. That was very special experience for me and got the energy to keep working for the prohibition of the nuclear weapons. Thank you. Thank you, Jun-san. Sorry about that. Thank you. Um, let's hear from Robert. Okay. Robert. Um, oh. um, first, I wanna thank Mari and Sally for what a, a tremendous job of organizing. I mean, I think of myself as a good organizer and it's like, oh my God, you put me to shame. We just did a, really beautiful and thorough job. And I really want to thank you. And I, and I want to tell you, Tony, that that graphic is absolutely gorgeous and um, really inspired and really gave the entire experience a, a real power and a beauty. And Kathleen, I want to thank you, not only for all of your leadership in, in nuclear disarmament action, but um, uh, for the um, beautiful flowers that you that you brought, having the the little bouquets for all of the participants was was a Kathleen Sullivan touch. It was fantastic. And um, one of the things that I think was really wonderful about this project was that it brought so many people together. And um, it it not only was important in in going to the missions, but it was important to bring us together. And and by doing this, I brought in Rise and Resist, which is a is a wonderful um, activist organization. And, and this um, action gave them an opportunity to uh, really feel a part of, of uh, the treaty and, and, and the movement towards uh, the prohibition of nuclear weapons. So I'd like to share my screen. Well, let's see. We visited Costa Rica, Cuba, Dominica, Ecuador, El Salvador, Fiji, Gambia, Guyana, um, and um, so I'll share a few photos, share screen, bring up my photos. Uh, here we were at the mission of El Salvador where we were uh, greeted outside of the mission by the legal counsel of El Salvador and they were very uh, grateful for uh, bringing it. These are our Rise and Resist. These are all members of Rise and Resist who accompanied me as did Susan Strickler, the filmmaker with 
um, who did the film on Setsuko Thurla with Michi Takeuchi. Um, these were, were office worker, it was an office worker in the permanent mission of Guyana. The, the ambassador was not available. Um, and the, the permanent mission of Cuba was kind of funny. We had to put the everything in a box that then it was like an open shoot that you put it in the box and then the box moved back to the receptionist. It was very, very high security. So we didn't get to meet anyone. And here, Ambassador Prasad from Fiji, I want to thank Christian for um, really working hard to, to make this happen. The ambassador was in meetings and um, uh, we, 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 Christian really did a beautiful job of pulling it off so that we were able to meet with him outside of the United Nations. Um, oh, and then we also met with, where was it? Well, anyway, oh yeah, here. Um, this is the um, Maritza Chan Valverde who represents the country of, of um, Costa Rica. And, and they, as you know, Elaine White Gomez of Costa Rica was the president of the um, conference that created the treaty. And we had two beautiful pictures of of Elaine with her ambassador, Representative Gomez, um, with Setsuko Thurlow just moments after the treaty was, was signed with uh, these, this glow on their face and this embrace that, that just said it all. And so we were able to give hard copies of those photos to uh, the mission to bring back to, um, uh, to send to ambassador, or is she, is she ambassador, uh, Elaine White Gomez? So um, as part of this, uh, we want to thank Tony. We created a um, we created a toolkit to go forward in our nuclear disarmament legislation in front of City Hall, and we want to thank Tony, who we give credit here for his logo. Uh, this toolkit it lies both on the Rise and Resist uh, website under Get Involved and on the Youth Arts or on the Hibakusha Stories website on, on the home page that has a, a downloaded P, a PDF that you can download that shows you, gives some history of the treaty. Um, it shows some of the actions that we did um, uh, for the treaty. We did a, a, a polar bear plunge on New Year's Day to support the treaty. This was on, in our hearing, there's Catherine at our hearing in January 28th to, um, to uh, on, the, on the city council legislation. Um, here's Seth's photograph of that um, uh, action that Rise and Resist did. So we encourage you to uh, join us in, in acting locally. You know, I, I'm with Rise and Resist. We're activists. What can we say? We use this opportunity to, to take the next step. Um, and and um, this action really, you know, made Rise and Resist feel a part of, of um, this whole uh, action. And, as, and the next action that we're doing is we're doing a vigil on um, Valentine's Day at City Hall at the um, municipal building um, on Sunday at 1 p.m. from 1 to 2 p.m. And it's going to be a vigil and a photo shoot, one hour only, masked and socially distanced. And it's the theme is because we we do this work because of the things we love about being alive. And we've been trying to keep a really positive attitude towards um, our, our encounters with, with city council. Um, it's been stalled for over a year now and, um, and yet we still are just kind of marching forward. So let's see. Oh, and also one other thing is we wanted to thank Nathan Snyder, a wonderful educator who's been doing a nuclear proliferation uh, nuclear um, module in his at the NYC I school in Chelsea at New York City Public School and his students have made uh, paper cranes over the years beautiful paper cranes and and it was it's really wonderful to know that their work also goes out into the world and was was shared with the missions and so um, I just want to thank everyone I was I think it was really uh, a, a wonderful and remarkable experience and um, congratulations. Thank you, Robert, especially the illumination on the UN building. Yeah, that was really a great job. It was like, I think of myself as a young kid, you know, seeing that United Nations being built and to think that I would do a rogue action of illuminating it with an anti, you know, the message about nuclear abolition. It was like, it was great. 
And I'm really thrilled that, that different missions saw it in action, live and in action. So thank so you so much for it. your dedication and the inspiration to all of us. It's, it's mutual. Thank you. So uh, next, we'd like to hear from Sally regarding the next steps and where do we go from here? Because this is not the end of our activism. So okay. Sally. Yeah, I'm going to um, mute myself. Where do we go from here? Um, I realize we're, um, we probably don't have too much time left. And I I know people probably have questions. I hope people have been answering questions who have the answers in the chat. Um, because we might not have time to have as many questions as we had hoped for. Um, so where do we go from here? Um, as we were going from mission to mission, uh, I know a lot of us felt the burden of living in the United States, a nuclear weapons state that has almost half of the nuclear weapons in the world that does not support the TPNW and in fact pressures other countries to oppose it as um, we thanked all the courageous state parties to the treaty, which resisted that pressure, we became really acutely aware that we must double down in rededicating ourselves to eliminating nuclear weapons here at home. So uh, we've actually been answering some of the questions where we go from here in, in, um, in, the, in this session, so I'm, uh, some of it, I think maybe we've already got answers. Uh, but one thing seems obvious. We should continue to thank future state parties. Cambodia became the 52nd ratifier. Let's thank Cambodia. And um, number two, um, there are 34 signatories to the TPNW who um, haven't ratified yet. Um, so the question is, uh, how can we encourage these countries? This is a list of the 34 countries. Um, how can we encourage them to take the next step? That some of them we understand the Philippines are on the way. Um, and then we've also heard from, uh, from Robert and from Kathleen about um, a next step we can take pressing for the passage of the New York City Council, the resolution and the bill. So these are the numbers. Um, uh, we can put them in the chat for you. Uh, resolution 976, that's the divestment uh, from the nuclear weapons companies and reaffirming New York City as a nuclear weapons free zone and supporting the treaty. And the bill 1621, um, creates the advisory committee that Kathleen spoke about that examines nuclear disarmament issues related to New York City. And I love the idea of the curriculum also. Um, number four, uh, we can join the I Can Cities appeal and or the Back from the Brink campaign. So outside of New York City, there have been um, a number of e um, efforts in uh, New York State and around the country. Uh, so far, 37 cities have adopted the I Can Cities appeal resolutions and uh, 52 municipalities or mayors, three counties and four states, including New Jersey, have adopted uh, resolutions supporting the five goals of Back from the Brink. Um, those five goals are renouncing first use, ending sole authority um, by the President of the United States to use nuclear weapons, end hair trigger alert, um, cancel enhanced weapons, and pursue global elimination. These are two different approaches to reach the same goal. And interestingly, the local and state uh, entities who adopt one uh, often adopt the other. Um, this to go. So five, 
We want to press the US to rejoin arms control treaties. Uh, there was a good step in the right direction with the ex recent extension of the New START treaty with Russia, but the negotiations with Russia need to go further. We want to see deeper mutual reductions in stockpiles of both strategic and non-strategic nuclear weapons. And we want to see the US join or rejoin the Open Skies Treaty. Number six, we want to press the United States to re-enter the JCPOA, which is also known as the Iran Nuclear Agreement, um, and, uh, use, and more than anything, we want to see the U.S. embrace the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. So these are uh, some of the steps that we can take in our own organizations and I hope that we can embrace and share the February 14th event that Rise and Resist and Habakkuk's Stories has put out there. Um, and we can work in coalition together. Um, we also want to share with you uh, how you can stay in touch with the Manhattan Project for a Nuclear Free World. Um, we can put the email, Facebook, and YouTube website in the chat. And also with uh, Peace Action New York State, there's an email website, uh, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube channel. The recording that we uh, did of this event will be up on the YouTube channel, and we will share that with everyone uh, who has uh, registered. So um, back to you, Mari. Thank you, Sally. Yeah, so another thing that we can do is also we can reevaluate our bank accounts um, because the majority of US banks do invest in uh, companies that manufactures or develop nuclear weapons. So um, in New York City, Amalgamated Bank, which has a, a headquarter near the Union Square, that's a small community bank, but they have been against nuclear weapons. So they have uh, nuclear-free portfolio. So if you have, let's say, um, retirement accounts or you want to invest on something or you have just, you know, simple uh, saving accounts, perhaps that I, your bank, if it's not a amalgamated bank, it's very likely that your money is invested to nuclear weapons. So uh, please take a look at your uh, bank uh, bank's um, investment record and if they do indeed uh, invest to nuclear weapons please ask them to divest from nuclear weapons um, otherwise um, you could always move your bank accounts to amalgamated bank so um, that's another thing that you can do um, let's move on to the q a session um, do we have any questions Christian, do we have, have you seen any questions? Okay, can you hear me? No, we have not received any questions. Okay, in that case, um, I would like to hear, we would like to hear um, the coalition that you organized with the youth groups. I think it's wonderful for all of us to know that uh, there's a coalition um, organized by a couple of youth groups and um, yeah. Yeah. So hi everyone. So I'm just going to briefly, you know, discuss about this really great youth coalition called Reverse the Trend, Save Our People, Save Our Planet. And it's really focused on amplifying um, young people from frontline communities that have been impacted by nuclear weapons and climate change. So in the process of forming um, partnerships. So if you're interested, uh, I'll give you the website now, RTT reversing, give me one second. And it's a really great um, website. It has resources. It's really focusing on, you know, the relationship between nukes and climate. We actually created a curriculum for students was made by young people. They've been spending like the entire year like designing it, super exciting. And then we also have a toolkit 
that provides like really basic like information about nukes and climate and how to get involved in the movement, as well as um, information about our docu series. We're um, creating a docu series featuring um, young people all around the world. Lovely Umayyam of Bomb Shelto is spearheading that initiative for us, and it's really great. The first episode is centered around um, a group of Marshallese youth who are living in Arkansas, who are part of the Marshallese Educational Initiative. And we also have a live discussion forum for youth activists. And if anyone's um, you know, interested in learning more, I'm going to just put my email in the chat box. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much, Christian. Um, let me see. Oh, I guess that's that concludes today's uh, report. Uh, I'd like to, on behalf of this team, I'd like to thank all of you for joining us today. Um, Mahan Project for Nuclear Free World will be posting a couple of Fukushima related videos on our YouTube channel. So uh, please uh, take a look in March and there will be uh, interesting uh, seminar organized by a group in California related to the um, how ionizing radiation disproportionately impacts on women and girls. And the guest speaker is Mary Olson, who played a significant role in including that's, you know, this particular sentence in the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons recognizing that ionizing radiation disproportionately impacts on girls and women. So um, once I have the information, I will share that on our Facebook page of the Mahan Project for Nuclear Free World. So if you are interested in learning about the updates on nuclear weapons, nuclear energy, uh, radioactive waste, and related policies, please find us on Facebook. So. Uh, thank you so much, Sally. Would you like to say something before we close? Well, only to thank you, Mari, and thank everybody for all your contributions. Thank you so much. And I will stop the recording, so, and we'll share it.